Hi guys, just wanted to give you a quick heads up before this episode begins that we now have merchandise available on both Teespring and Spreadshirt. So you can go to shop.spreadshirt.com slash Ocho and or Tees or teespring.com slash stores slash Ocho dash and dash or Tees. And if you enjoy the show, please go check them out. And if you're able to help support us by buying some shirts, we would greatly appreciate it. I know at the end of this episode, I kind of put some outtakes on because while we were recording this, Teespring actually had pulled the shirts down for 24 hours, but they're back up and running now. So again, shop.spreadshirt.com slash Ocho and Ortiz or teespring.com slash stores slash Ocho dash and dash Ortiz. Warning, although this podcast revolves around Disney, Disney movies, and Disney related themes, we have a tendency to use mature language, which is not suitable for all ages. Discretion is advised. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another edition of the Ocho and Ortiz Disney Podcast. It was another one of Josh's picks this week, and I actually enjoyed this movie. So, without further ado, let's get into it and discuss it. Let's get things started. <laughs> Buddy Josh, how's it going? Oh, you know, it's a going. I'm I'm here. I actually I'm not we're not strained for time today because I, you know, I don't actually work tomorrow. Which yes, is weird. we are recording this on October the eleventh, which is Thanksgiving w- weekend here in Canada. And so happy Thanksgiving to all of our fellow Canadians and happy Thanksgiving to all of our American followers, because by the time this comes out This episode, even though we're recording this on October 11th, will be released on November the 15th. So U.S. Thanksgiving will be coming up shortly and your election results will already have been decided. We're not going to get political on this episode because that is not what we are about. So I will just wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. We hope I I don't think we ever get political, Dave. No, we we did a little bit when we were covering the howard documentary because we had to due to the subject matter in the film but other than that we try to stay out of politics on this show we just want to do our best to try to bring joy and happiness to those of you who listen to us even if i don't always like the movies we listen to and i go off on rants (laughs) and swear and curse and talk about how terrible the movies are We still want to bring you joy and hope you enjoyed listening to the banter back and forth between Josh and I. Yeah, yeah. and that's that's the thing that I love doing, too, is that I love that you and I always have different opinions. And it wasn't even just about like it's not even just about these movies. We've that's the same thing when we talk about wrestling before as well. Right. Yeah. I always found that when you and whenever you and I have differing opinions, it makes it for a more interesting show. Yes. And it's it's just more it's it's more fun because, you know what, when we're especially when we're doing like a Disney review of Descendants or something and you despise it and I love it. Like it's just, it's much more fun because it's, it's, I, it's, it's fun because we laugh way too can much. I, can I just say something? I, I don't know what it is. We recorded our first Descendants episode and released it. I don't remember when we recorded it. It was recorded early April. The release date was April 19th. Oh, so fuck. that episode was released like what? It, I mean, we're recording this in October. So six months ago. Yeah. In the last month and a half, since the beginning of September, that episode that we've down that we uploaded on April eleventh, just in the last forty one days, has had sorry, my mic cord is causing interference. That episode alone in forty one days has had one hundred and fifty six downloads. And I do not know what it is that's causing all of the downloads for that particular episode. Because that was the third episode that we did. Yeah, is and that is that what that's when you messaged me asking if I'm just like uh, <laughs> doing some multi downloads or something. Yeah, right? I, I asked you if you were doing spam downloads, if you were yeah, creating yeah, yeah. fake accounts just to download it. No, 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 no. Because we have gone from 
500 downloads on Podbean of all of our episodes combined to, as of this recording, 678 downloads within a two-week period. Just just two weeks ago, we were only at 500 downloads, and now we're almost at 700 as of this recording. By the time this episode comes out, we may be at 900. If we're lucky, we'll have broken a thousand. A, we'll have broken a thousand. So yeah. I just, because it is Thanksgiving, I do want to take a moment and and just say thank you to everybody who has listened and downloaded these episodes. Like this just started off as a thing that we were going to do temporarily during quarantine until life got back to normal. But we've both, I think, really had a fun time doing this. And the fact that people are downloading and listening, personally, I can't thank you guys enough. So so thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Thank you guys very much. Like like you said, this has grown way faster than I thought it would. Yeah. Um, I know you too. And just like in, in comparison to the wrestling podcast that we did, this is – it took us a lot longer. I don't do – we, do we ever even reach 700 downloads in the wrestling podcast? Oh, yeah. For the wrestling podcast as of right now – Last time I checked, which was, I think, on Wednesday, we have 4,500 total downloads, but that's over okay. the course of five years. Yeah, yeah, that's close to five years. If we, if we're going to, from the projection, the way this is going, it's a thousand in less than a year. So, I mean, like, a thousand in six months, it, yeah. possibly a thousand in about seven months. Cause by the time, like I said earlier, by the time this comes out, it'll be November. And uh, like, with the projections right now, we should be at a thousand downloads by the time this comes out. So, yeah, we could even, in theory, because we started this in April, we could even be in by in at two thousand downloads by the time our one year anniversary comes around. So, uh, for me and for Josh, that's just absolutely stunning and and unfathomable. We didn't think that was possible when we when we first started this. So. Yeah, because like, like he said, like Dave said, this is literally just supposed to be a little side project for us while, you know, wrestling was on hold. And like we just we love doing it so much. And, you know, as long as Disney keeps producing movies and there's something about Disney to talk about, I mean, uh, this is something I want to keep going with for sure. Yeah. And and just the, the the relationships we've been building as well. I mean, Josh doesn't know about everything because I do most of the social medias because Josh isn't very active, even on his personal social media websites. He'll check things out, but he doesn't like really post a lot. So, I mean, just the relationships we've built. We did our first interview a couple weeks ago with with Timmy Britt, which I'm, I'm so glad people have had a chance to listen to. And all the feedback that I've gotten on it thus far has just been tremendous. And Timmy's a great guy. He wants to come back on the show. We want to have him back on the show. And I want to be there for the next time. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know you do. I know you have a lot of questions for him. And through Timmy, we've all, I've also been put in contact with another Disney podcast, Dudes Dish Disney. Go check out mm-hmm. their podcast. I guess, I'll, I, I guess unofficially I'm making them the shout out of the week. Dudes Dish Disney podcast. They're based in Orlando and they, they, their podcast, from, I've heard about three of their episodes so far. They've even asked us, they messaged me the other day on Twitter about doing a collaboration with them down the road. So hopefully we can work something out and get everyone together at the same time so so we can we can work on the collab with them. But again, be sure you're checking them out. Dudes Dish Disney. Great bunch of guys. So yeah, we've been building relationships. We've been getting positive responses from the listeners. So I cannot thank you enough. If you guys do want to support us, we also have merch out now, so you can wear Ocho and Ortiz Disney Podcast merchandise to help support the show even further. You can go to teespring.com slash stores slash Ocho dash and dash Ortiz. It's a general store, so it has everything Ocho and Ortiz related. So it has it has shirts and hoodies and products for the Disney podcast. And if anyone out there is a wrestling fan, it's also got our shirts and, and, and products from the wrestling podcast that you can buy as well. So we would greatly appreciate any support you can you can provide if you want to help us out by supporting us by wearing us on your chest loud and proud. Get a shirt, get a hoodie. And hopefully, very soon, we'll be up on Spreadshirt as well. 
So I'm hoping we'll be on Spreadshirt by the time this this episode is up and running. Check the link. Check the description for the links below. And obviously, if you guys want to become our patrons on Patreon, you can do that as well for as little as a dollar a month. Go to patreon.com slash Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. Shout out to our first and currently only executive producer, William L., our first official patron on Patreon. If you guys want to join Will on Patreon, again, it's patreon.com slash Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. And as we always say, we know money's tight right now because of the global pandemic. So if you can't support us financially through Patreon or by buying merch, the best way you can support us for free is what you guys have been doing, which is just downloading our episodes and sharing us. Follow us on social medias. We have 134 likes on Facebook. Let's try to get that up to 200 by the time Christmas rolls around. Go to facebook.com slash Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. We're on Instagram at Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. And we're also on Twitter at Ocho Ortiz Disney. We only have about 37 followers on Twitter right now. Let's try to get that up to 100 by Christmas time. If I can get 200 likes on Facebook and 100 likes, on, 100 follows on Twitter by Christmas time, we'll do some sort of special prize giveaway. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I will figure something out and we'll do it. But we have to get to 200 likes and 100 followers by Christmas time. And then, yeah, it, just share us, keep listening, let your friends know about us, follow us on the social medias. And before I start, I also want to give a big shout out to Germany. I've been looking at our statistics and Germany is like our third most downloaded country. Like <laughs> it goes US, <laughs> Canada, and then UK and Germany for are tied for third for countries that have downloaded the most Ocho and Ortiz Disney podcasts. I didn't know there there was a hunger out there for Disney related podcasts in Germany, but shout out to all of our, our German listeners as well, obviously to the American, Canadian, UK, Irish, and every other country that, that has downloaded and listened to us. And before we get into it, I, I did give my shout out of the week to Dudes Dish Disney. But this week, this week's movie was Josh's pick. So, Josh, why don't you give us a second shout out of the week? OK, thanks. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure we've we've shouted them out before, but I'm going to say shout out to Stogie Mania. Those guys are awesome. They haven't and, on, uh, this, on this podcast yet. But yes. So, sorry. We haven't done it on this podcast. Oh, yet, okay. Well, yeah. Then, yeah. Shout, shout out, shout, shout, shout out, out to, to Stogie Mania, and you know, shout out to Savage Steve because you know we're doing a topic today that he really wanted to be a part of. Yeah, our buddy he's Savage not feeling Steve well. Really wanted to be on this one, but unfortunately, he pulled out because he was sick. But yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, you know, shout out to to Steve and the Stogie Mania crew there, and I uh, hope you guys like this one. Then we'll we'll get you. We will definitely get you guys on soon. Yeah, you can follow them. Just to give you guys a heads up, they are a wrestling podcast, so if you guys are wrestling fans as well, definitely check them out. Even if you don't like wrestling, their banter is fantastic, so check out their their show anyways. They're available on all major podcasts and platforms. That's what I forgot to say. We are available on all major podcasts and platforms. We're available on Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, and of course, our main source of uploading is Podbean. Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod dot Podbean dot com. So those are all the places you can check us out and where you can send your friends to to check us out. But yeah, check out Stogie Mania and follow them on their social medias. It's at Stogie Mania on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook.com slash Stogie Mania for their Facebook page. And without further ado, this week's topic, a movie I loved as a kid, a movie that I hadn't seen in probably about 15 years, so I wasn't sure how well it was going to hold up, but, and if I remember correctly, it was the last film to be released while John Candy was alive. The last movie he was in, Wagons East, was released after his death, but today we are talking about Cool Runnings. So Josh, why don't you take it away? Cool Runnings? Fuck, oh, and, and sorry, just before we do, again, sorry for the no visual podcast side of things. I am still having issues with the camera freezing about five minutes after I start recording the episodes. So once again, there is no visual podcast this week. 
hopefully hopefully i'll get that fixed very very soon but yeah cool running sorry sorry every, to cut you off josh every time you say visual podcast i just think of sean and drunk discussions <laughs> Well, that's where also where I got the the shirt thing. Wear us loud, wear us proud. <laughs> Put us on your chest. That was the Sean thing too. Hashtag hashtag Sean on top. <laughs> hashtag oh hash, hash, hashtag hashtag is Sean still alive? Hashtag 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 rest in peace, brass rail. Not brass rail. No 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 no, 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 no. brass taps. taps. <laughs> yeah, brass taps. <laughs> Brass rail is something something completely different. But yeah, so just very quickly, guys. I know we've been rambling for 20 minutes already, but just very quickly. Brass Taps was a local pub here in Toronto that we would go to frequently. I recorded one of my other podcasts from there. I used to do a podcast with a buddy of mine, Sean. It was called Drunk Discussion, the Drunk Discussions Podcast. And we would go to the bar, we would go to Brass Taps, and we would just record live there. And as we got progressively more drunk during the night, and it was a fun time. Unfortunately, Sean ended up moving home to Saskatchewan about two years ago, and that brought an end to the podcast, which I still want to bring back at some point. But yeah, Brass Taps was very gracious. We recorded a lot of podcasts there. They never once questioned it. In fact, they even went along with it. The staff would come on and talk to us. Customers would just random strangers would come on and talk with us. It was a great time. Brass Taps was an East York institution. East York is the suburb borough of Toronto in which we live. But yeah, very, very sad that they're closing their, their doors after 30 years because of all the all the COVID issues going on. I had a lot of great memories there. And at some point I will do a special Drunk Discussions podcast just to reminisce about brass taps but we are here to discuss disney and cool runnings so josh for the for the That's third it. for the third or fourth time let's try to get into it all right so cool runnings for for those of you who have not seen cool runnings you should really go watch it this movie is fantastic it starts off with the the one guy uh got Darice, Reese, yeah. is, get, is getting ready to run and qualify for the Olympics. Yeah, he's he's training to be for the 100 meters, 100 meter dash, because that's in, in the movie, that's uh, an event that his father had competed in and won a gold medal at the Olympics for. So he's following in his father's footsteps and training to become a 100 meter dash Olympian. Yes. So, you know, it starts with him doing a couple of runs and then it goes in and that's when you see his, his buddy Sanka, who played, he is played by Dougie what? Doug. And I forgot I forgot how awesome Dougie Doug was. Yeah, no, he, he's fucking hilarious. But I oh, sorry for swearing. Wait, what am I? Okay. He's pretty awesome. He's so funny. I didn't know who his actual name. And when you text me Dougie Doug earlier today, I'm like, I don't I, I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> but once you said Sanka, I was like, oh, OK, yes. Okay, yeah. So it shows they get to Sanka, and he is the best push car driver of all of Jamaica. And what is a push car driver? It's well, I guess it's like a go kart, but you don't have an actual engine. It's just a downhill thing. You gotta push your cart down. And anyways, he's going for a what a seventh wor- oh, it's a world, a seventh win, seven year in a row's win straight there. I don't know if it's seven wins in a row, but it's the seventh year in a row that he's competed. And apparently that's the most times anyone, uh, uh, at least storyline-wise in the movie, that's the most times anyone's ever competed in the race. So, Yeah. So Sanka's going to do, uh, Sanka goes for that. And w- my favorite thing about that, too, is the banter that he has with the little kids, right? Yes. It's so funny. Sanka, are you going to win? Yeah. Now get back to work. <laughs> Yeah, making that- making the kid because there's the driver and then the the kid is like basically so there's a kid for for the for the push cart derby there's a kid and an adult and the adult basically like pushes and drives the car while the kid is hanging on and, and like pretending to be the driver basically it's like yeah, a the- soapbox derby yeah and the kid's name is Winston in the show 
or in the movie. I I remember that because at the end of it. So you know, it's yeah. What you what you call it? So soapbox derby. Yeah, it's similar to a soapbox. Is that what derby. you call it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. So they start driving, and Sanka's basically Sanka's when he's like, "Get out of the way! The Jamaican rocket's coming through," and he's going down. He's going down. And Winston is holding on. And then at the end there, what what did he do? They they go over the wrong spot, but they win. I'm pretty sure he wins, doesn't he? Yeah, he wins. He wins, and then they can he couldn't stop it. So then they go over the the line, and he they're about to crash, and all you hear is him Sanka say, "Jump, Winston!" <laughs> you see Winston, you see Winston jump, and Sanka just goes straight through like a a, a shack, basically. Yeah. And then Doris and everybody comes looking, and you hear Doris, Sanka, you you dead? Yeah, yeah man. man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. After that, then you go to see. That's when we get into Doris is getting ready to do the hundred meter dash. Now it's the qualifiers. Now it's him, and there's you know there's a whole lineup of them, but only the top four get to go to the Olympics. Yeah. So now it's him, and then another guy shows up, Junior Junior Bevel shows up to. He's a part of that race, and he says hi to Doris because he, he he realizes who Doris is because he knows who Doris is. And because of his father and stuff, right? Yeah. And then there's also another guy right beside him, Yul Brenner. The ra- the race starts. Everything's going good. The two people in the lead right now are Yul and Doris. And Junior's right behind them. And then Junior trips. When he falls, he also trips Yul and Doris. And that goes there goes their shot at being in the Olympics. <laughs> Doris tries to get the committee or the, the guy to rerun the race because it wasn't fair. And he says, I can't. I'm sorry, you're going to have to wait till the next Olympics. Or if you want to be in these Olympics, then you're going to have to either work on your boxing or it was something else. It was boxing and yeah, fuck, I can't remember. It was boxing and something else. And he's like, well, I'm not a boxer. I'm a sprinter. And then he sees a picture on a wall and it's of his father. And it's also of his father and another guy. So he asks who this guy is. And the other and the 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 committee guy says, "Oh well, that's Irv Blitzer. You know, he was he can't he still lives on the island. He came here looking for your dad and other sprinters because he believed that they having you know good sprinters as a bobsled team would make them better to be faster for a bobsled team." Yeah, and then because so the idea like, is that they're so used to sprinting anyways that because with bobsled you have to sprint at the start anyways to get the to push the to to push the push the start. bobsled at the push start so yeah. basically john can what well, what ends up being john candy's character basically has this notion that sprinters because they're so used to starting fast anyways for short distances would be perfect to just push the push the cart and get in quickly so they have a better push start time which would eventually help them along the way for their overall time yep so Doris finds out that Irv still lives on the island, so he gets the idea to go talk to him. He take, he's asked if he can borrow the picture of Irv and, and his father, and then as he's leaving, he turns around, he's like, just one question. What's a bobsled? Yeah. <laughs> I fucking died at that part. <laughs> so then he, he goes and he finds Sanka. He's like, Sanka, we're going to do a bobsled. He's like, and then he kicks the wheels off of uh, Sanka's push cart. He's like, this is a bobsled. He's like, oh, so it's a push cart without wheels. Yeah. He's like, okay, let me see it. So then he starts reading the, man, the, the, the book or whatever it tells you about, about bobsled. He's like, okay, so a team is four men pushing down an ice. Ice? Ice? <laughs> like ice? Like polar bears and penguins and ice? <laughs> I'm out. He tries to say he's out and he's like, come on. He's like, you know you want to be he's like, no, I'm not going to no ice. There's nothing to do with ice here. I'm not doing that. Come on. And he's like, come on. You know you want to do it. You will put your face on a Wheaties box after we win. And everything is like, Doris, all you have to say is, Sanka, you're my best friend. We've been through a heap of uh, things together. Please do it. So then he, he agrees. Sanka agrees. Doris agrees. And then they go to try to get John Candy's character, Irv, to coach them. Mm-hmm. And when they first meet him, he is basically like a bookie. He's trying to listen to uh, a horse, horse race. race. Yeah. And the horse that he chooses does not win at all. And so what does he do when he when he hears that? He takes a, a pool cue and breaks the shit out of the radio. 
<laughs> they go try to talk to him, and he's pretty much like, go away. And they keep trying to talk to him. So then he goes and grabs a pool cue again, and Sanka's like, oh, my God, you remember what happened to the radio? They bolt out of that little par- bar pub or whatever it is. They leave. Then you see him just start playing pool. And as he's playing pool, Doris and Sanka poke their head up through the window. He tries to hit them with the pool cue again, closes it. The next few scenes are just that. Them trying to convince Irv to, you know, be their coach. Hiding, They're hiding in the washroom and everything. And he's almost giving this guy a heart attack when he opens the door. To the point that Irv gets really mad, starts choking Doris. And is like, I'm not, I don't want anything to do with this. I don't want to be a part of it. To me... The sport is dead. It doesn't exist anymore. That's when Doris talks to him. He's like, come on. I Tells him his name. Says, "You, I am this guy's son. You wanted him to be a uh, bobsled team, a uh, bobsled, a part of the Olympic bobsled team. Let's do it with me and my, and uh, get me a crew first. So he finally agrees. And then they hold a meeting to try and get some of the best sprinters in Jamaica to be a part of the team. Yeah. As they get there. That whole room is full of people. And then Sanka's like, okay, Sled God, you have the floor. I love that he calls him Sled God. That, yeah, he does it throughout the that's movie. That's one of my favorite things. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking fantastic. He either calls him Sled God or Coach. Anytime he tells him, Coach, just fucking hits him. It's great. <laughs> fucking great. So um, as he's doing that, sorry, give me a second. Yeah. Oh, so as so as John Candy is talking about the what. Uh, what uh, what do you have to do for bobsledding and everything? They're showing a video as well. It starts off fine, and then it goes basically into just crashes. accidents upon accidents upon yeah. crashes. <laughs> people getting hurt, people getting killed. And then at the end of that, when they turn the lights back on, the only two people left inside the room are Doris and Senka. <laughs> In walks Yul Brenner, and he's like, uh, he's like, I'm, he's like, I'm just here because I want to. He's like, I just want to be a part. Or basically, Yule just wants to get off the island. Yeah. That, that's what he says. He wants to go to the Olympics and get off the island. And he's like, well, there we go. We got our team. And then that's when, what's his name? John Candy says, well, there's no such thing as a three-man bobsled. You're still one Jamaican short. That's when Junior walks in. And he's like, am I late for the meeting? Or uh, has the meeting not started yet? And that's when Yule tries to kill him. Yeah, so San- Sanka and, and Doris are the only two left. But in comes Junior and Yule Brenner. Yule Brenner, yeah. And I they got there after after the video of all the accidents had been shown, so they didn't see that part. So they 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 are basically now sort of forced to work together, even though Yule Brenner is still pissed off at Junior for costing him a spot in the Summer Olympics by tripping him. Keep in mind that this was for the 1988 Winter Olympics, but back in the day, the uh, Summer and Winter Olympics used to take place in the same year. So the Summer Olympics would have taken place in 88 as well. Um, oh, really? Yeah. I think I it was. I think it was 94 when they finally split them up. I think I think 92 was the last time that they were together where they were together at the same time and then 94 the winter olympics were produced were held and then in 96 the next summer olympics were held i think 90 88 very well may have been the last year that both the summer and winter olympics were held at the same time because yeah the ioc was actually i in doing a little bit of research for the movie as i was watching it the IOC apparently was close to completely canceling the Winter Olympics altogether after the 88 games because the ratings weren't there. There wasn't as many events. There weren't as many countries competing and the television ratings weren't there. And it was it was it was basically treated like an afterthought at the time. But Calgary did such a great job of of hosting and adding a couple of extra events and then, obviously, with Jamaica coming in as the bobsled team and a couple of other countries that normally didn't compete in the Winter Olympics at the time. Like, it's not mentioned in the movie, but, again, during, doing research for the movie, Mexico actually had a bobsled team at the 88 Olympics, and that was the first time Mexico had 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 
done, as far as I know, any sort of participation in the Winter Olympics. So 88 really did a good job of adding more events and adding more countries, and the ratings were actually up. So they they decided to keep the Winter... The IOC decided to keep the Winter Olympics, but host them in separate years from the Summer Olympics. I just can't remember if 92 was the last year that they were together or if 88. I think it may have been 92 because I think both both host countries for the Summer and Winter Olympics would have already been set at that point, but I could be wrong. Yeah, no, that's interesting because I didn't even know about Mexico having a bobsled team either. Well, now you know. I know, right? Maybe, I was about to be like, we had a bobsled team? Maybe one day you can get a, a Mexican version of Cool Runnings. We're going to have a bobsled team. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself there. <laughs> well, I mean, not ahead, because technically you already have one. But <laughs> no, I, I, I meant with the with the little jingle oh, I just yeah, yeah, did. Yeah. There you go. You understood now. Yes. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So... Now that they are going to be the bobs, that that's going to be your bobsled team: Yul Brenner, Junior Bevitt, Senka, and and Darius. So now they're starting to they start to train is where they do, and they have he he gets them what looks like a bobsled, but it has wheels because you know they're in Jamaica. There's it's not cold. There's nowhere. There's no ice there for them to practice on with a real sled. None at all. Not not whatsoever. I've been to Jamaica. It is hot. Hot, like yeah. So we get, I guess they get like a different push car, and you know, it it it's you needed a tetanus shot to get into that thing, that's for sure. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and then they start trying to get in there, and Sanka's like, "I'm going to be the driver," and he's like, "No, you're not." He's like, "Yeah, I am." He's like, "I'm the best push car driver of all of Jamaica. I'm going to be the the driver for this." And then he tells him, he's like, "You know, the 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 driver is has to be studying." Everything has to yeah, know Irv, all the turns, Irv, all the Irv, all the Irv, tracks. Irv tells him all the hard work and everything that 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 has to go into being the driver, and that he when when all the other teammates are at the bar drinking, the the driver is at in his room studying and, and memorizing every single turn and and getting to know each each track. So <laughs> as Irv is going on in detail about all the work that that. The driver would have to do. You can sort of start to see Sanka lose interest, <laughs> and, yeah. and then he finally says, "I think we should make Doris the driver." Yeah, exactly. So Doris, Doris is the driver. Then it's I think it's Junior. Then what's his name? Yule and Sanka is going to be the brake man, last person to get in. So they keep trying, and it doesn't work at first. They they can't seem to. He said a respectable start time is six seconds. A push start and they're starting off at 16 seconds so they got a ways to go so they you know they keep going they keep trying and eventually they hit i think it was a 5.9 something like that yeah 5.9 and, but when as they're doing that in that run the brakes stop working so they almost hit a lady who's walking i think it was goats almost hits a lady with three goats and then they go downhill and smash right into police car almost smash into the police car I think they, oh, I think they stop just before they hit it, don't they? No, I think they hit it. I'm pretty I, sure they I hit thought it. the police came out and said you almost hit us. Oh, maybe I don't know. But anyways, so they're there, and then the police are like, "What is this? What are you guys supposed to be?" And he's like, "Well, we're the Jamaican bobsled team." <laughs> they start laughing. They're like, "Are you kidding me?" And as as they're laughing and asking who they are, what they're actually doing. Down comes John Candy running and going, you did it, 5.9, 5.9, let's keep going, let's do it again. Now you're in the wrong, and the, the cops are like, who are you? They're like, I'm their coach, I'm the bobsled coach. Let's go, get this thing back up to the top, and they start groaning. After that, they go to, you cut to a scene of, um, what's his name? I just said him. John Candy goes sure. to now the, the Olympic Committee to try to get money so that they can get to the Olympics. Yeah, I think they I think they said they needed something like $20,000 to get to the yeah. Olympics. Yeah, he, he, they needed 20 grand to get to the Olympics. So, but the Olympics are only 3 months away at this point. Or the Winter Olympics are only 3 months away at this point. So, he goes, "No, like I'm not going to give you guys he's, he's like, "Let's let them practice downhill a little bit more and we'll see how it goes later on." And he's like, "No, like we need to go now. We need to get to we need to get to Canada so that well, they can. Well, not only that, but the the 
the Jamaican Olympic Committee president is basically saying saying that he feels that Irv is just doing this sort of as a publicity stunt, and he doesn't mm-hmm. want Jamaica to be embarrassed on like a huge global stage. Yeah, especially he says that he's not going to give the little money that he has to them to be embarrassed at the Olympics. So yeah. it's it, it's a no. So after that, he tells Doris, he's like, uh, we're not going. Doris is like, don't worry. We'll get the money. We'll raise the money ourselves. He's like, you just don't take a no for an answer. He's like, not in my vocabulary. And that is when we start getting some of the great fucking songs from Senka. They all decide to start trying to raise money. Doris starts doing a kissing booth. Yule starts doing like arm wrestling competitions. And then Senka just starts singing. You know, enough people say they can't believe Jamaica that we got a bobsled team. <laughs> I fucking love you know what's sad about that Dave is me and one guy at work will say that we've been saying that at work for like a month now <laughs> we will literally look at each other as we're packing a trailer and we'll be like I'm like, I'm like hey you know what they say we, you know some people say they can't believe and the other one whoever says that the other person will be like Jamaica's got a bobsled team uh, it's fucking fantastic that's why I said I've watched this movie like three times in like the last month it's fantastic but they end up finding out that Doris has only raised $184. You all wrote, raised maybe 20 bucks, I think it was like that. And they're like, yeah, every, e- everyone, because it also showed a montage of Doris going to like businesses and stuff trying to get oh, yes. to get money. And every single person was like pointing and laughing at him. Yeah. So now they're trying to figure out how much everybody has. And they're like, Sanka, how did your single? He's like, he gets up, how did it go? It went like this. You know, there's people say they can't believe Jamaica, we got a bobsled team. <laughs> and he's like, no, how much did you raise? He's like, oh, I made a dollar and 16 cents. <laughs> because the one, what's the best part is as he was trying to sing and get some money, the homeless guy comes up. He's like, I'll give you a dollar to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my oh, God. Man. Just Fantastic. as a side note, like, apparently when they were first cast in this movie, they actually wanted Eddie Murphy as Sanka. No. No, I was, sorry. I was looking at IMDb earlier, and the original cast that they tried to get was they wanted Denzel Washington as Doris, Eddie Murphy as Sanka, <laughs> Wesley Snipes as Jewel Brenner, <laughs> and they wanted Marlon Wayans to play Junior. But they always Marlon- had they always had John Candy in mind for for Irv. So, but yeah, that's that's according to IMDb. So take that with a grain of salt. Marlon Wayans. To play Junior. To play Junior. Yeah. Wesley Snipes as Yule Brenner. Marlon Wayne Marlon Wayne's as as Sanka, okay. But as Junior? <laughs> and Eddie Murphy as no 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 no. I could say Mar- like I said, Marlon Wayne's as a Sanka, that could have been funny. <laughs> right? But no no no, not as fucking no, no. You know what? The way the, the casting that they had I thought was perfect how it ended up being. Yeah, it was a it was a great cast. Yeah, exactly. So no, just no IMDB. No. As Dave likes to tell me when I say about how great of Chillin' Like a Villain is, just no. I mean but, they didn't end up being cast, so but yeah, according to IMDB, which is user edited, so take it like I said, take it with a grain of salt. But according to IMDB, that's that's the original cast that, that they want it to go with. Huh. All right. So after that, Junior walks in with a bag and he's and Doris tells him, don't you can unpack your bag. We're not going. We didn't make enough money. He's like, oh, well, that's too bad. And then he dumps out fucking like twenty thousand dollars onto the, the, the fucking table there. Yeah, because he's he like, comes from a wealthy family. Yeah, he comes from a wealthy family. But he's like, how did you make the money? And he's like, well, I went and sold my car. Right. And they're like, no, we can't take this. He's like, no, it's for all of us. He's like, if it wasn't for me, you know, you guys would be going to the Olympics right now. So. Let, let me contribute, right? Yeah. So then they're like, okay, it's for us. And then Doris's Which, by, wife... By or, the way, according, according, again, according to IMDb, none of that was true, that they didn't ha- the team didn't have to raise money for themselves. According to IMDb, the Jamaican Tourism Board was on board with sending Jamaica there because they wanted more tourism for Jamaica. So mm. it was actually the Jamaican Tourism Board that funded the Jamaican bobsled team in 88. Huh. Interesting. So, Therese's wife is like, oh, you, 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 we, you know, tell your dad thanks because, you know, he didn't have to let you sell the car. And he's like, well, he doesn't know that I sold the car. 
he thinks I lent it to a friend and, you know, he doesn't know I'm on the team because he thinks I'm going to Miami to start a job there. And yeah, because I forgot there was a little thing there with his dad earlier telling saying that he got him a job at, I guess, like a law firm or something. Webster, Webster and Cohen sounds like a law firm. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what it was, but yeah, Webster, Webster and Cohen in Miami. Yeah. So off to Calgary, they go. They get to Calgary. And as John Candy walks outside, the rest of them stay inside because they get hit with their first wave of cold air and snow. Sanka runs back inside, puts on every single piece of clothing he had in his bag, and then he puts his bag on as well. <laughs> like, what did, he, what did he say? He said something as they were getting on the bus. I don't remember what John Candy said, but it was something fucking funny, too. Uh, oh, man. I can't remember. So then they get to the hotel, right? Is that what happens? They get to the hotel, and John Candy goes to go register them, and he's trying to find out where it is to register for the bobsleds. He finally finds a table and uh, he tells him, like, hey, I would like to register my team. And the guy's like, OK, what country he says Jamaica? He's like, no, you're funny. What team? He's like, Jamaica. So then he checks. He's like, oh, wow. Would you look at that? A Jamaican Bob said the team. And, you know, he starts going over the, the regulations, the rules, the qualifiers and everything. As John Candy's walking away, he walks into his old teammates. Yeah. Team, uh, his team his old USA. coach and two of his old teammates. Yeah. For when he was a bobsledder. And. His coach doesn't say a word to him. The one guy just makes fun of him. The other guy, he, he meets up with the other guy, says, hey, meet me at this revol- at the revolving restaurant. He meets up with him and asks him for a bobsled. He's like, are you serious? You came all the way to Calgary without a bobsled? He's like, well, I need one. I got 4800 bucks." So then he sells him, I guess the guy sells him a training one. And, you know, they're all like, he, sh- he shows them the bobsled afterwards and they're like, they're all, everybody's looking at it like, what the fuck is this? Except for Doris. Doris is like, she's beautiful. She, and it looks like shit when they go on their first run. Well, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a training bobsled that was in terrible condition. Exactly. But, you know, Doris worked on it. He fixed it. It looked okay. By the end of the movie, it looked like a regular bobsled, right? Yeah. Right, I mean, it sorry. still didn't work like one, as we found out. But it, they, they did a good job of polishing up and... and painting it and put and getting like the Jamaican name and flag on there. So Doris did a good job of, of putting it all together from from what it started off as. Yeah. So they're they're seeing they're seeing the the sled for the first time and Doris is the only one that really sees anything from it. And then we get a whole bunch of different montages, including them like training and Doris working on the sled. And then at one point, we get into the three, uh, D- uh, not Doris, but, oh, we do get a, a training montage where all four of them are, like, in a bathtub practicing the turns and stuff. But yeah. we do get a scene where there's the three of them, Sanka, Yul Brenner, and Junior in a hotel room. And Yul Brenner's still not fully on board as, as a teammate, but he basically says that he's only on this team so he can get out of, of Jamaica because that was his whole plan of, for being a, an Olympian was so he could win a gold medal and get out of Jamaica. And then he shows him of a, a picture of a, of a palace that he wants to eventually live in when he's famous and has enough money. And it ends up being a picture of Buckingham Palace and <laughs> Sanka and Junior both laugh at him and be like, well, if you want to live there, you have to marry the Queen of England. And so he ends up he, he ends up ripping up the picture, not ripping it up, but just crumpling it up and throwing it away. And then Junior actually walks up to him and has a heart to heart because Sanka, Sanka start talking about how no one gets out of Jamaica. Like every everyone ends up in in sticking in Jamaica and, and you know, living it. I, I can't remember if he called them huts or not. But basically not living in a palace like that. And so Junior goes up to up to Yul Brenner to try to, you know, be encouraging to him and be like, listen, if if you want to get out of Jamaica, you know, you can accomplish anything you want, but you know, you have to work hard at it. So he basically gives him a heart to heart and he ends with like, Go get your castle. So that's sort of the turning point in Junior and Yul Brenner's relationship. We also get a couple of scenes where they're 
we get a scene where they first bring the sled to the racetrack with all of the other countries there. And all the other countries have all their nice looking sleds and everything. And they're working on them, polishing them up. And they're bringing this like junk training sled. <laughs> and everyone's sort of making fun of them for it. And th this is also the scene where Sanka can't fit the helmet on his head. So he's like, coach, coach. And John Candy just like punches the helmet down on onto his head. And then we get a couple more montages of them actually doing the qualifying rounds. And going back to what Josh had said earlier about them signing up for the, uh, registering as a bobsled team, John Candy's character Irv is told by the person doing the registration that the time of the qualifiers have changed. So in order to qualify to be in the Olympics, they have to run the course in a time of 102 flat or under. And John Candy was like, I thought it was 105. And, and the Olympic guy was like, it used to be. So they're training to get it for 102 flat. And then once they get to the get to the track for their qualifier, the, the guy from Team USA that hates John Candy's character, Irv, is one of the judges. And he's up in the he's up in the tower keeping the time. And he go he turns to John Candy as he's about to walk away. He's like, Oh, by the way, the time for the qualifier is now a minute. And John Candy's like, Well, I was told it was a 102 and he's like, well, things change and he walks away and then you see John Ta John Candy eventually make his way into the into the tower where they keep the where they keep track of the time and everything while the team ends up while the team runs their qualifier and it turns out or they end up running the course in a time of like 59.6 seconds or something like that. So they end up qualifying. And then you see yeah. then you see Sanka Jr. and and Yule Brenner in a bar sort of celebrating. And Sanka's doing line dancing with this with this pretty girl. And Sanka and Jr. are sort of just talking to each other, having a couple drinks. And then I don't even know what team the guy is supposed to be from. I think it was the German team comes over and starts talking trash to Yule Brenner and Jr. and being like, nobody wants you here. You should just go back to Jamaica. And Junior Junior and Ewell Brenner end up going into the washroom. And this is when Ewell Brenner has his heart to heart with Junior. Because Junior's like, he's right. I shouldn't be here. Even my father doesn't want me to be here. I should just go back home. And Ewell Brenner's like, no, you, you're Junior. You're, you're, I forget the words he uses. Proud. Uh, pri he's pri like, proud. You're proud. You're powerful and you're a badass, badass mother. Badass mother who don't take no crap from no one. So he he keeps getting Junior to look in the mirror and repeat that to himself. And, and so that leads to Junior building up his own confidence and going back out to to face the face the German Bob's letter. Again, I think it was German, might have been Russian, I'm not hundred percent sure, but I think it was supposed to be German. And he's like, I think you owe me an apology, so you better apologize right now. And then the the German bobsledder pushes him down and is basically like, what are you going to do about it? And then that's when you see Yul Brenner step back into frame and he just levels off and punches the German bobsledder, sending him falling into the into the table. And that sets off a, a bar brawl. And <laughs> you see you see Junior and Yul Brenner fighting off all the all the German bobsledders and a couple of other people. And then you just see Sanka, who's still line dancing. He turns his head and sees there's a fight going on involving his teammates. And he's like, excuse me, to the to the lady he was dancing with. And he jumps in and joins in the fight. And then we get a scene in the hotel room where... Fuck. Um, Darice. Darice is basically chastising them. And then Irv comes in and Irv chastises them. And then after that, we get another couple of training montages where where they're running and training and working on their push start to to get off on a better time and then it becomes you also see them so not only are they training on the bobsled track but you also see them in like the hockey rink practicing as well yes 
But yeah, so they were practicing on the hockey rink as well. And then it becomes like day one of of the actual event and it's being televised and you see everyone in Jamaica hovered around the TVs and and watching the event and it doesn't go so well. It does not go so well. They get off to a bad start. They can't all get into the they have trouble all getting into the sled when they do eventually get into the sled they're not handling the turns well their heads are all bobbing their bodies aren't aren't stiff like they should be to keep control and composure so it it does not go well and does not and we missed the part we missed the part of them getting disqualified oh yeah, yeah 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 so after they qualify and they're celebrating and everything they they and they end up receiving a notice saying that the team has been disqualified and so Irv goes to I forget what it's called in the movie it's like the Association of Winter Sports because the IOC does not allow the u- the use of the name International Olympic Committee <laughs> so anytime you see anything in in TV or movies like it's very rare you see somebody get the permit permission to use the term IOC. So in this movie, it was the Association of Winter Sports. And so uh. they're, they're holding a meeting and they're sort of laughing and you don't really hear what they're talking about, but you can hear them laughing from the boardroom. And Irv, Irv rushes in with the, with the notice of disqualification and basically is saying, you know, like, this is bullshit. And then the guy from Team USA who absolutely hates him is like, well, you know, your team didn't qualify because they didn't run any actual, they didn't have any actual competition races. And Irv is like, well, you know, in, in an Olympic year, qualifiers count as as actual competition. And the yeah. other guy's like, well, they used to, but they don't anymore. And again, Irv is like, this is bullshit. If you want to punish me, if you want to ban me from the games, if you want to kick me out of the country, do it to me. Don't punish my guys. They didn't do anything to you. They have nothing to do with what I did in the past. He's like, 16 years ago, I made a mistake. I cheated. I put weights in the bobsled to make it go faster. And I've had to live with that embarrassment. My family's had to live with that embarrassment. Side note, it's not actually illegal to put weights in a bobsled. It's actually encouraged because bobsleds have to meet a certain weight. So it's actually legal that if the competitors in the bobsled don't equal to a certain weight, you can actually put weights in the bobsled to add weight to it. So it's actually not illegal to put weights in the bobsled. But for the sake of this movie, they were saying that it was illegal to do that. And Irv is basically apologizing for it. So he's like, listen, punish me. Don't punish my guys. And then it cuts to cuts to them in the hotel room, sitting by the phone. And then they get a phone call saying that they're back in. And then that leads us into day one where they don't do so well. And, you know, everyone goes back to making fun of them and everything again. And then day two goes much better. They actually shave like... I think they said five one hundredths of a second off of their push start time, and yeah. their 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 overall time was like two and a half seconds better than their than their first run. So they actually ended up after day two being in eighth place, and then on the third day, which is the final day of race, there the announcers and everything are talking about how well Jamaica has done, how much how much better they look and they seem to get better and better each time out and that they could possibly even end up winning a medal. I'm assuming that they mean a bronze medal because I don't think that they were anywhere close to uh, silver or gold. I mean, this movie makes it seem that it's based on your time, your, your best time overall. But from what I know, and I could be mistaken on this, it's actually your overall time of all three bobsled races that you run that determines your medal so i mean after the first day they weren't doing so well the second day they managed to bump into eighth place i doubt they were even in position for a bronze medal but for the sake of the movie let's say that they, they say that they were in position for a, for a medal so they go in their their push start is even better than than the than their second run 
and then you, they show everyone in Jamaica watching. They show like everyone in the crowd has sort of rallied behind Jamaica and become fans of the Jamaican team. Even the announcers pull open their coats and they're wearing like Team Jamaica t-shirts underneath. So everyone's sort of gotten behind Jamaica except for like the Germans and and the and Team USA and but like the audience and everything has sort of gotten behind J- Team Jamaica. So they're running their their third and final final race and they're doing well, they're going super fast, but as they're going we're shown the the inside of of the bobsled like all the mechanisms and stuff and you can see the me- the the bobsled falling apart from the inside all the like screws and stuff coming loose and then eventually one or two of the screws pop off and San- um not Sanka oh, why can i never why can't i think of Doris Doris fuck sorry you see you see Doris lose control of the steering and then you hear the announcers go, uh-oh, it looks like something's wrong. It looks like they're not in control. And then all of a sudden, one of the turns, the, the sled just flips. And they they go barreling down on the side with their heads scraping against the, the side of the bobsled track. Fortunately, obviously, they're wearing helmets. As safety precaution, they have to. So you see them going down the track on, on the side of the bobsled. And it's still going down all the turns because it still has it still has the momentum and speed. So it's still going. And then it finally comes to a stop, I would say, maybe 100, 200 feet away from the finish line. And you just see the crowd stop and stare at them. And paramedics and stuff are running to go see if they're okay. Yeah, the paramedics are running to see if they're okay. And then I think it's Sanka. And I think he says, Junior, are you dead? (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. He, he said it to he said it to to Doris. He's like, oh, Doris, Doris, you're dead. And he's like, nah, man, I'm alive. He's like, we gotta finish the race though. Yeah. So they get up, and all four of them pick up yeah, one end at, of the bobsled as, as the paramedics surround them. Like they get up yeah. right as the paramedics get there. Yeah, they get up as the paramedics get there. They pick a get up, and each of them pick up one side of the bobsled, and they start walking the bobsled to the rest to, so that they can cross the finish line. And as they're walking, everybody's staring at them. And the, the German guy of all, of all people, starts the one who's clapping. the one, yeah, he starts clapping. Everybody else starts clapping was along with them, including, including like the, the USA coach who was against them being even being there. And then as junior looks down at one point, junior's dad is there wearing a Jamaica shirt, which, Oh, we also skipped over that. Junior's dad showed up, told him he has to come home. Right. And uh, yeah, I, skip, like, I ended no. up skipping a bunch of stuff because we sort of yeah. rambled at the beginning. We're at like an hour and seven and a half minutes. Damn. Yeah. So as they're doing that, they're walking, they walk past the finish line and then, you know, they put the sled down and they're talking to everybody. And the German guy's like, hey, Jamaica, we'll see you in four years. Yeah. And uh, he's just like, yeah. So, yeah, they're walking towards the finish line. Every, everyone's clapping for them, and they finally walk through and, and cross that finish line. It ends up officially counting as a did not finish because they walked it through, and technically for it to count as a finish, they have to be in the bobsled. So they technically didn't get credited with finishing the race, but in their hearts, they finished the race, and that was what was important. Yeah, and I'm trying to remember the rest. It, what else happened from there afterwards? Oh, it's just the the German the German guy came up to them and was like, "We'll see you next in four years." Yes. And Doris hugs uh, what's his name, Irv, and they go back to Jamaica as basically as heroes and stuff. Yep. And then it kind of cuts out, and you get a little uh, little thing of they, they return four years later, but as equals in which, the Olympics, which again was bullshit. Well, I mean, depending on who you believe. Because, like I said, the stuff I was reading earlier, and it was split between Wikipedia and IMDb, both user edited forms. So, again, take it with a grain of salt. And I can't remember which one I saw it on. But, essentially, they were saying that the movie didn't portray that accurately because Jamaica was actually welcomed with open arms from the beginning of the 88 Olympics. And that there wasn't actually any animosity towards the team. So, depending on who you believe... That blurb of them returning as equals, which hints at the fact that, you know, 88, they were, they actually were treated that badly. That may have not been true. Again, depending on whether you want to believe IMDb and, and Wikipedia, which are both user edited platforms, 
or if you want to believe the movies, which don't or always... Or Disney. If you want to believe the movies, which don't always tell the truth about true stories. No, that's a lie, Dave. <laughs> don't you don't you lie like that. But, yeah, so the movie came to an end. One of the best endings in a sports movie in... in I'll say one of the best endings in in film. Just the sight of them walking to the finish line carrying the bobsled. I guess I can't say best endings because that technically wasn't the end. It was one of the final scenes. But one of the best scenes in film, in my opinion. It's It's been a while since I've watched this movie, but this this movie still holds up. Obviously, there's a lot of technology and stuff from the 80s and 90s in that movie that you wouldn't see today. But based on the fact that it was taking place in that time period, it works. And again, it still holds up. Josh, what are what are you going to rate it? I'm going to give it a solid seven. It's a great movie. It's a fantastic movie. I think I am going to go ahead and give it an eight. I really, really enjoyed this movie. I mean, I knew... It was a classic. I knew I loved it when I was a kid. I forgot how much I loved it. And it brought back a flood of memories. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give it an 8. Nice, nice. Awesome. But we are at an hour and almost 12 minutes. So we are going to wrap it up. Once again, guys, we cannot thank you guys enough for all of the downloads that you've shown us so far. If you enjoy the show, please continue downloading us. Please continue letting your friends know about us. And please continue sharing us on your social media pages. You can find us on all major podcasts and platforms. Stitcher, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, TuneIn, and of course, Podbean, Ocho, and Ortiz, DisneyPod.Podbean.com. You can follow us on the social medias, Facebook.com slash Ocho and Ortiz DisneyPod. Instagram at Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod or Twitter at Ocho Ortiz Disney. Like I said, let's try to get us to 100 followers on Twitter and 200 likes on Facebook by Christmas. And I will come up with some sort of special giveaway for, for you guys. We You can also support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash Ocho and Ortiz Disney Pod. Again, shout out to our executive producer, William L., if you guys want to become our patron, you can do it for as little as a dollar. And again, our shout outs of the week. Josh, Josh's shout out was for Stogie Mania. My shout out was for Dudes Dish Disney. Be sure you're going, going out, checking out their podcasts and following them. And then other than that, Josh, do you have any final words before we go? I don't know. Just uh, like, like you said, thanks for all those downloads. It's crazy to us that we've hit this so many already. And we'll be back again soon. Yep. And again, happy happy Thanksgiving to everyone in Canada and the U.S. Because we're recording this Thanksgiving weekend here in Canada. And by the time it releases, it'll almost be Thanksgiving in the U.S. And as always, guys, whether you're listening to this in the morning, the afternoon, the evening, whatever time of day it is, where you are, when you're listening, we thank you for listening. We appreciate you listening. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. I swear oh, to God, Josh, you, like you have no idea how close you were. Like you kept coming up with movies and I was like, no, fuck this. And my entire plan was like, if you hadn't have ended up going with Cool Runnings or Moana, my plan was I was just going to come on, press record and then walk away and leave you to do the review by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I was like, that's no. That's fantastic. As soon as I IMDB'd zombies and I saw the first picture that came up, I was like, fuck no, no, nope, not, no, no, I, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think it's a Kenny Ortega film. Don't care.
do not care. It was too colorful for a zombie movie. You know what's hilarious? Ava, Ava actually loves that movie. I remember I told him, like, Yo, you should watch this movie, Zombie. She's like, oh, okay. Because she, she's kind of fallen off the whole Disney Channel movie thing, too, right? Mostly because she doesn't watch TV as much. But when I told him, like, you should watch Zombies. Also I because I, she's become a full-grown adult woman. That, too. Well, when I came home, I came home one time and she was watching Zombies. I was like, I, I just, I heard one song. I was like, are you watching Zombies? She's like, yes. I'm like, do you like it so much? She's like, this is my third time watching it. I'm like, oh, see, it's fucking fantastic, right? She's like, I love this movie. I hate you so much, but I love this movie. <laughs> like, there were times where if she wants to go to, like, if she just wants something on the background, she will put on Zombies. And she's been waiting for Zombies 2 to come out. And, like, it's finally out on, on Disney Plus, and she's pretty happy. <laughs> All right. Well, let me let me play back the audio recording and see how it goes. You see, did you want to cut in there? It sounded like you wanted to cut in there. No, sorry. I got distracted because our shirts have been pulled off of Teespring. Already? Already. <laughs> for what? I don't know. They didn't even give me a notice. <laughs> I I was just I was just looking at at Teespring and uh yeah they've they've pulled our shirts. What the fuck? <laughs> so uh Sorry, sorry. Now now I want to go and find out what the fuck. Why? I, Is it literally just the word? I'm thinking it's literally the fact that we have Disney in our name. Wow. That's some bullshit. Oh uh, yeah, I'm I'm kind of pissed off about that. <laughs> so wait, are you are and you still fact, gonna get the, the stuff that, that they, you ordered? The fact though? that they didn't even send me an email to like let me know because I had like I I had ordered one of the shirts for myself and I just all I got was yeah. an email saying that that the shirt wouldn't be printed and that I've been offered a refund. I'm like, what the fuck? So I I went in to check and all the shirts have been pulled from the website. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, good times. <laughs> Anyways, 